What is happening everyone? Jim here, RCAD. Want to show you all a quick, easy upgrade for your legendary Buckster front end loader or even your Huina front end loader. Easy to do, very simple, and absolutely paramount. The bucket on the legendary Buckster, probably on the Huinas as well, I'd imagine, just does not dump far enough down. It doesn't tilt far enough down for dumping material out of it. And it tilts too far backwards in the opposite direction. The bucket, when you curl it back, will actually, the top of the bucket will actually make contact with this next arm right here. And that is no good. That is a no good situation to have right there. Uh, and a real full size loader, a real full size loader, when you tilt the bucket back, it is vertical in the upright position. Just like that. And it doesn't go any further back than that. Now the legendary Buckster, and I'm sure the same thing on the Huinas, will actually go back so far, once again, it'll make contact with this arm. And that's not the way it's supposed to be. It's supposed to come back to right about here, and when you dump, it should come straight on down and hang up and down vertically like this. Actually a little bit beyond vertically on an actual loader, that way you can rock it back and forth a little bit to shake out the material. So I made a quick little modification to this to improve our angles on everything. So currently, right there is all the way tilted back. Won't go back any further than that. And there we are all the way forward, giving us a vertical bucket when we're dumping out material. Here is a look at the stock legendary Buckster link, and I imagine the Huina loader uh, link is similar. You keep this in place right about here. Eyeball everything up, and we can see how much we lengthened it. Not too far, but by a few millimeters there. By a good 10 millimeters or so, we lengthened that by. And I did that by making a custom length using a couple of shock end links and a really long M3 screw. This is a 35 millimeter M3 screw and two M3 lock nuts and two metal links on either end, and another 35 millimeter M3 screw going through the front with a couple of uh, shock insert spacers right here. So let's take a peek at the hardware that's involved here real quick. And here's a look at the hardware kit. RC full drive, scaler and crawler screws and support bag, part number Z-S0445. Z S0445. You can get this from RC4 Wheel Drive directly or on A Main Hobby's website and probably several other hobby store websites. And it is full of all kinds of goodies. Uh, keep in mind, I've had this for a long time. <laughs> so all the spacers are seriously depleted. This little bin right here was full of spacers, and it was just right up to the roof here. Uh, all of these bins were pretty much filled up to the top. So it's been used quite a bit since I've had it. Uh, but it comes with all kinds of spacers, which is the point of the story here. These little guys here, very convenient to have. Other aluminum spacers. These guys are tapered. This other little guy down here is tapered as well. Different size lock nuts, regular nuts, washers. That's a Traxxas sledgehammer part, pay no attention to that. E rings, many different size assorted grub screws, M3s, M2s, tons of cap screws in here of all different sizes. So just chop full of parts, very convenient to have. Once again, including 35 millimeter long screws as well. So, very cool little parts container to have laying around. Highly recommend it. Essentially, I used two of these M3 35 millimeter screws. Get our tape in the right spot here. And that is right around a 35 millimeter screw, M3. So, I used two of these. Three lock nuts total, M3 lock nuts. And uh, two of these little spacers right here, the shot collar inserts. So for the front bucket, we've got one M3 by 35 millimeter screw, two of these aluminum spacers, and one lock nut on the end of it, coupled with one of these little metal shock end links right here, that is in the middle of that nonsense. And that is what we have going through the front right across here. 
when those two little inserts come in on either side, they fit right through the bucket and they take up that gap. Yes, it is a little loose and sloppy at the moment, but this is just a rough draft. So first take on that. And that got us our upper link taken care of. As far as the uh, other end, this portion of it, essentially I had to use another one of these M3 by 35 millimeter screws. So what I did here with this other M3 35 millimeter screw is I ran an M3 lock nut down the screw with the nylon lock portion on the top and ran it down to about right about here, just kind of eyeballing. And then I took another M3 lock nut and I ran it down upside down right about here, give or take. Use our metal end link here. Simply thread it on the end. I chuck this end into my vise and use a very small hacksaw to cut the head off of our screw. Coming back just a little bit to make sure that I left some thread on there. So I wanted to cut back right up to about where my fingernail is, leaving some thread on there and cut the head off of the screw. That way we could thread our other end of our eyelet down onto this end over here. So I made a custom link using an M3 by 35 millimeter screw and two lock nuts and two of these metal uh, shock end links or steering links. Now for the upper portion right up here, boys and girls, uh, this part was a little bit difficult. Well, not really too difficult, but you have to use your factory screw unless you decide to just drill a hole right through the other end of this because this is tapped out on the other end. There's a solid cap on that. Around here and look at the other end and see we just have a solid cap on that side. So it's threaded on the inside here. So unless you plan on drilling this out and running a, a screw all the way through with a lock nut on the back half, um, you're going to have to use your factory screw. And in order to get that factory screw to fit through that eyelet, you need to remove the swivel out of the eyelet right here. And that's held in with this little brass fitting on the back edge. So use a pair of pliers and just kind of negotiated this around until I got that brass fitting out of there and then popped the eyelet out of it and then I pressed the brass fitting back into the socket again. Now once that is achieved it will fit over top of the screw that runs through this hole. Only problem is, is it's a little bit sloppy there. That fit is just a little bit sloppy. So what I did is I used some black wire insulation like this black insulation right here that's going around this electrical wire when you're stripping off electrical wire, I just saved a little chunk of that, that flexible, uh, plasticky, rubbery insulation. And just stuck it right through the center of that hole there. And then ran the screw right through it, and that took up all the gap on the inside. And made it a nice snug fit there. And then it's just a matter of adjusting your length and getting everything right to where you need to be. And right here, we are actually sitting, looking at it right now, our length on our rod here from center to center we are roughly right around 54 millimeters so basically anywhere between 53 and 55 millimeters i want to say we're sitting right about 54 currently and looking at our stock length right down here from center to center we are roughly 42 millimeters on this one from center to center so we went from 42 to right around 54 millimeters a little bit of a difference there and then once again, here is our end result. Getting a full dump out of the bucket. And it doesn't tilt back far enough to spill dirt back onto the loader. Beautiful, and that's the way it should be. Here I did a couple more quick upgrades to the Buckster. I added a driver to the cockpit. It has an old school Lego Technic driver. And he's hot glued into the chair. Fits in there quite nicely, really. Sorry about the flash. He has one hand on the hydraulic controls, the other hand on the steering wheel. Steering stem is not looking so hot down there. All right, so I had to raise up the steering stem and bend the steering stem down to put the steering wheel closer to the driver. So essentially I just removed the steering stem from the mounting surface there. Uh, right down here, just removed the stem from the lower base. Put a spacer in between it to raise it up. Ran in a longer screw and then used a nylon bushing around the base of the stem. 
to kind of block off where I raised it up. This is the style of bushing that I used right here. Just a cheap nylon bushing. So the steering stem has been raised and then heated up with a micro torch, excuse the flash once again, and bent inwards to the driver's lap. He sits in there pretty good. I'd love to put an opening door on this vehicle, but unlike the Hoyna excavators, not so easy to do just because the door ends right here and we have nothing but open glass. So <laughs> putting an opening door on this is pretty much impossible. Only thing you can really do is put a hinge on the roof so you can access your driver from the top. We're not too worried about removing our driver, so primarily I just removed the cab, installed our driver, glued him in place, made sure everything was nice and clean, and then mounted our cab back on the vehicle. Now the next thing that I did was install the hitch ball on the back of the Buckster. So we have a nice solid hitch back here, mounting point, screwed right into the body on that lower half. And what I used here was two RC four-wheel drive Trail Finder 2 leaf spring perches. So there's two leaf spring perches right here, and they are back-to-back, -back, bolted together. These are the leaf spring perches that sit behind the front axle and bolt up to the frame right underneath the cab portion. Normally this is Z-shaped. So normally that thing is shaped like that, shaped like a Z. It comes over, drops down, and comes back. And all I did was removed our Z out of it, or took the L out of it. Just clamped each one of these pieces into my vise over there. And then one at a time, used a small hammer and hammered them flat. Laid them on top of each other, clamped them back in the vise again right here. Drilled new holes going through. That way both holes were going to line up since they're stacked together. <laughs> Things get a little bit out of alignment. You can see that one plate is slightly higher than the other. Drilled new holes through it so everything lined up including for the hitch ball, reinstalled it, and we have a nice solid mounting point back here for a trailer. The hitch ball is just a standard hitch ball that comes on any RC receiver for the most part. So nothing special right there. I will be upgrading to my traditional hitch ball here in the future, which is right here. This is a custom made hitch ball. I do have videos on this. And what this is, is a drive shaft universal from a WL Toys 10428. So this part right here would slide into the drive shaft. This part right here would go onto the axle pinion. And that is your drive shaft universal. So what I did, obviously this is threaded on the bottom. I cut off the bulk of this material, just leaving enough room that I can still run a screw into the bottom. So it's been drastically cut down. I have a rubber o-ring going in between the hitch ball and the receiver itself. And then the screw that runs in is carefully measured <laughs> and then loctited into place. So this is where your hitch ball gets its spin right here. The ball actually spins inside the receiver. Now this upper portion of the hitch ball becomes the part that you would put on your trailer. Once you have all this, these springs removed and you have the pin out of there, you end up with just an, an open socket like that. It's very easy to use a body pin to reassemble everything. So this part would go on your trailer. This part's sitting on your truck. You put that part over top of this part, slide your pin through, and you're all good to go. And then you end up having all the range of motion that you have with the drive shaft universal. Plus it spins inside your receiver so that gives you your left and right and all that nonsense. So yeah, custom hitch ball right there, yet to be applied to the Buckster. If we look over here at another custom trailer that I recently built, um, I have another example of that drive shaft CVD universal for trailer hitch. This is an FYO 6 chassis, 6x6 six chassis, with some aluminum TV antenna tubing, some stainless steel plate turned into a trailer, uh, RC After Dark one off. <laughs> On the inside there is the other end of our drive shaft universal. Right there, the receiving end of the drive shaft universal. Held in place with a couple of long grub screws going through the upper portion. That would be the grub screw mounts that hold that cup onto your axle pinion. And right now it's just holding it in place inside the trailer. 
and that essentially is a recessed trailer hitch. Basically, you just slide this cup over top of the ball, and then use a hairpin to put right through that little hole right there, and through the top of the ball, and it pins everything together. Works out very well, super flexible, and extremely tough for going off-road. And here is a couple more examples of that WL Toys Drive Shaft Universal trailer hitch. You can also use the Universal off of a Viterra Twin Hammers as well. But the WL Toys Universal has a fatter grub screw hole on the other end over here. And it screws right on to the end of these cheap trailers. These are like the $45 to $65 trailers that you see online everywhere. We have two of those here, two different styles of those trailers, both using that same WL Toys Drive Shaft Universal, which once again just threads right on down, just threads right onto that shaft. So that works out perfect. That gives you a little bit more flex from side to side with your trailer itself. But not only are you getting all the flex from the ball joint on the end right here, you're also getting your left and right from your pivot inside the receiver. And you're also getting this side to side motion from it being threaded on to the end of the tongue on the trailer. So very convenient. Little stand, block of wood, magnet glued in the end. Trailer stand. And finally we have my NQD jet boat trailer. Now this is a 3D printed plastic trailer. You can purchase this online. I bought it from a gentleman in Israel who makes these. And this was actually his display model. <laughs> it came with a 3D printed plastic hitch on it, and that broke after a few runs, so I had to make my own little design for that. It's a pretty nice little trailer, all in all. A jet boat fits on here nicely. It's designed for the NQD jet boat. It didn't come with lights. It didn't come with suspension. It didn't come with these big tires. It didn't come with fenders. Basically just the trailer, the rails for the boat to sit on, all the hardware for the trailer, no gas can, this upright portion, and the hitch itself is all you basically get with that kit. And it's normally a solid axle mounted. So the axle is mounted right up here to these blocks normally. And then I just made my own custom suspension system for it, which I do have a video for. Wheel wells are made out of a uh, Clorox wipes container off the bottom of it. Just cut the bottom off of the bottle and then cut that in half, painted the insides, bolted them up, bam, wheel wells. Lights are a set of cheap off-road lights. Lens is painted red with a Sharpie, bulbs painted red with a red Sharpie, so they light up red. Trailer hitch. This is using a Viterra Twin Hammers drive shaft universal. A couple of Proline light bar mounting brackets right here. <laughs> so I had some chain hangers, essentially. A leaf spring shackle hanger on either side. Kind of clamping this all together. I drilled a hole out on the top half of the Universal there so I could slide an M3 through it and have a free range of motion with no snagging or grabbing. And on this one, you get your normal left to right hitch ball rotation inside the receiver as well as having your normal universal rotation of the U-joint itself. And then you get added rotation right here, or added movement right here, I should say. So great for going up and down hills, driving through little pits and valleys and things of that nature, uh, really allows this hitch ball to flex. Plus you get your normal universal rotation and your left or right rotation of the hitch ball and the receiver. So. Yeah, this little setup right here <laughs> works out pretty good on the off-road jet boat trailer here. Now the reason for putting a hitch ball on the Buckster is because I'm hooking up a tandem axle trailer for the back. This is just temporary for the moment. We're going to eventually be putting on one of these CVD style hitch balls. Trailer is still under construction. This is not going to be the bed. <laughs> uh, out shopping for a traditional style dump box for this currently. What I plan to do is installing a worm gear screw driven servo inside here, a 4AA battery pack, and an RC four wheel drive wireless winch controller on a key fob, and rigging this all up and turning it into a dump trailer to go behind the Buckster.
which should be a pretty good scale fit by the time we get everything all put together and figured out. So there's a last look at our front end loader with our trailer and driver and bucket mod. Once again, driver fits in there very nicely. Good scale fit inside there. Lego Technic driver. Bucket mod working out awesome with our adjustable link up on top. So we can adjust how far we want our bucket to tilt down. Trailer hitch on the back. Future trailer behind it. <laughs> so that is going to do it, everyone. Very much appreciated for y'all sticking around and watching the video. As always, questions and comments are always welcome. And we will see you all on the next one. Thanks again.